A woman is allergic to her own period. A man infiltrated the police force and worked for 30 years without anybody knowing. And the Taliban bans the sound of women's voices in public. These are the weird stories for Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a guy in a closet. A woman learns that she's allergic to her own period. This sounds like a living nightmare. It took several weeks and countless doctors to determine that this severe allergic reaction 28-year-old Georgina was suffering from seemed to occur on a monthly basis. The revelation led to an unexpected discovery that she actually suffers from a biological intolerance to her own menstrual cycle. That really sucks, huh, when you learn that your, uh, your body hates you? This all began with these strange burning sensations that she had in her eyes. They kept watering and her cheeks were red. She thought it was a reaction to some fabric conditioner or something. She sought some help from an eye specialist, underwent an MRI scan in hopes of identifying the cause of the pain. The tests all came back negative. Uh, She saw some Medics who hinted that she may simply be suffering with some extreme eczema. They tried some topical steroids to treat it. After several further investigations were carried out by specialists, Georgina noticed a unique pattern surrounding when she experienced these reactions. It happened to be whenever she was menstruating. Eventually, she discovered that she suffers from a very rare condition where she is allergic to her own period. This is an actual medical condition that I had never heard of. It's called progesterone hypersensitivity. Turns out once the eggs are released from the ovaries, an allergic reaction by the body is immediately triggered. Wow, you know, and I thought my tree nut allergy was devastating. That doesn't happen every month to me. It probably happens twice a year. And it is debilitating, but I have no room for complaints after hearing about this woman's condition. You know, strangely, this isn't the uh, weirdest uh, allergy that I've ever heard of. There's some crazy ones out there. I met someone who's allergic to only watermelon, and I've met someone who's allergic to nickel, like the metal nickel. I don't even know how you find that out. And obviously, if you're allergic to nickel, I would move on to digital payments only. Don't handle any loose change at that point. Um, I've heard of a condition where people are allergic to their own tears. Have you heard of this one? I've even heard of the one where you're allergic to water and even sunlight. These things are just devastating. It's just tough to have a body. The Buddhists knew all about it. To have a body is to suffer. It's one of the principles. That's why I, uh, that's why I like Jack Daniels. It helps me with the suffering part. Now, Georgina has figured out a a workaround for this. She is on what are called contraceptive injections, which make her periods considerably more sparse, so she doesn't have as many. I'd imagine getting on some birth control to just eliminate your periods altogether would be another solution to this. It's got to really suck to be allergic to your own body's natural functions and if if this is, isn't an argument against intelligent design, I mean, I think we can close the case on that one. Nobody would design the human body the way that it is with all these allergies and whatnot. I think the other thing we're learning here is that it's just hard to be a woman. It's just extra hard. I feel so bad for the ladies. And so for the women in your life, be very kind to them. That's my message here. A Romanian man was an imposter on the police force for many years before he was caught. This is an incredible situation in Prahova, where a 25-year-old man who didn't even graduate high school managed to fool several law enforcement officers while pretending to be a policeman. This guy was cosplaying real hard. Armed with an airsoft gun, a transceiver, and a fake ID from the International Police Association, the fake lawman told real police officers that he worked for the Directorate of Special Operations. For almost a year and a half, he played through the fingers of the police officers, participating alongside them in traffic stops, on-site investigations, and even interviewing eyewitnesses. He conducted many, many traffic stops and even searched 
various suspects, all under the eyes of the real police officers who, for some reason, had no clue that he wasn't a real cop. This incident reminds me of that amazing Steven Spielberg movie, Catch Me If You Can, starring Leo, where he pretends to be a pilot, among other things. It just fools everybody involved. This guy's a mastermind, clearly. It also reminds me, there was like a nurse who worked for decades in Canada and was not a real nurse. Does anybody remember this lady? Well, uh, Some people are just dedicated. They want to do something. They want to play a role in the culture, and they're not going to let a certificate get in the way of that. I mean, there's a whole thing. Fake it till you make it. Uh, you know, some people are really faking it. and But, you know, they're not really making it. But, they, they, no, they, they make it. I don't know how to what level this guy was making it. Was he actually getting a paycheck as well? Let's keep reading and find out if he got on the payroll as well. It says here, eventually the higher-ups in the police department realized that something was wrong and began to investigate and were shocked by what they found out. The 25-year-old managed, through repeated lies, to mislead almost all of the policemen he came into contact with. He somehow spoke the same lingo as the cops, and the confusion of names made it look like he was a real lawman. So this guy, like, I guess he was very prepared, probably watched a lot of episodes of CSI, you know, then went out and bought himself a flashlight and was like, I'm going to do it. We're starting now. (laughs) I'm going to get on the police scanner and show up at some crash site, start asking people questions. says here, finally, the real policeman from Special Operations arrived on the trail of this fraudster who managed to document a large part of his own criminal activities. And now the magistrates at the Ploisti Ploisti Court have issued a warrant of preventive arrest on behalf of this fraudster. It still doesn't indicate whether or not he was on the payroll, so I'm going to assume he was just living off the bribes that he was getting. And uh, they've obviously put an end to this, but, you know, if he can do the job, I mean, why not just make him a legit police officer? You know, he's already trained. I mean, I mean, I mean at this point, he's kind of just real police, you know? No harm, no foul, maybe? Can we, can we go with that call? The other thing I'm wondering is, uh, does this invalidate all the arrests that he made during his tenure with the police? You know, because if you're... If you're arrested by this guy, I mean, it doesn't really, I don't think it counts. You know, so you're going to have to let a lot of people go, too. This reminds me also, lastly, I know I keep saying this reminds me, this reminds me, this reminds me of the uh, Seinfeld episode where Kramer fakes the job at the office and then gets fired. And this the firing scene is so funny when Kramer just says, but I don't really work here. <laughs> and then the boss says, I know, that's what makes this so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Great episode. Definitely worth a, a rewatch. The Land Down Under has never been easier to reach. United Airlines has more flights between the U.S. and Australia than any other U.S. airline. So you can fly nonstop to destinations like Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. Explore dazzling cities, savor the very best of Aussie cuisine, and get up close and personal with the wildlife. Who doesn't want to hold a koala? Go to united.com slash Australia to book your adventure. The Taliban bans the sound of women's voices singing or reading in public. Turns out these fellas don't enjoy the sound of women's voices very much. Do they have a clue how gay this makes them look right now? Just asking. So it turns out Afghanistan's Taliban rulers are cracking down on the sound of women's voices in public under a strict new set of virtue laws under the Islamic regime. The laws were issued Wednesday after they were approved by Supreme Leader Habatullah Akundazada. I'm just going to call him Akuna Matata. The Supreme Leader Akuna Matata, uh, this according to a government spokesman, who said that it covers aspects of everyday life, such as women's voices on public transportation, women's voices in music, and celebrations as well. This is coming at the uh, roughly the same time that they've put out a call for increased tourism over there. I covered that story. And, you know, all I have to say about that is finally a tourist destination with some peace and quiet. I mean, you know, you know how hard it is to take in that beautiful scenery of 
burnt out buildings and rubble with women reading and making announcements in the background. Sheesh, I don't want that. Who does? Uh, Jokes, guys, jokes. All right, we got the actual wording of this. It says, a woman's voice is deemed intimate and so therefore should not be heard singing, reciting, or reading aloud in public. It is forbidden for women to look at men they are not related to by blood or marriage and vice versa as well. I know this is sad. I'm, I probably shouldn't be covering this story because it's just depressing to learn that in 2024 you have this level of dehumanization. Yeah. When you w- view women as nothing but uh, baby-making vessels, yeah, <laughs> it's just terrible. Extremism and fundamentalism in any form is just a, a cancer to all modern culture. That's something that we're learning here. So uh, those of you who are uh, for p- inserting the Ten Commandments into classrooms in the U.S., just be aware. It starts there, and then it goes here. This incident. That's where it goes. So we got to be very careful. I, I urge us all to tread lightly on the fundamentalism Now, uh, clearly the Taliban is very pleased with this uh, step in what they see as the right direction to control women. Here's a quote from a spokesman. We assure you that this Islamic law will be of great help in the promotion of virtue and the elimination of vice. I'm I'm a little confused on the link between women singing or speaking in public and vice. But uh, then again, I'm not an idiot, so it's tough for me to make the connection there. I still have some questions here. Uh, how are you going to cast plays if you can't have uh, women's voices? It's just, is it going to be men playing the, the lady voices, like the Monty Python sketches? I don't like spam. I told you I don't want spam. That'll be ridiculous. The other question I have is, what if you happen to be a male over there, but you have a soft lady singing voice? You know, like Steve Perry or the Bee Gees. I hate to imagine a scene over in Afghanistan where a a young male with a beautiful singing voice is at karaoke singing. You know your eyes in the morning sun. I feel you touch me in the pouring rain. And then he gets dragged out of the karaoke bar and stoned in the town square. He's just dying while going, How deep is your love? Hey, what's up, my friends and my fellow weirdos? Thanks for spending another episode of Weird AF News with your boy Jonesy here. I was just thinking that uh, I should have switched up that BG song. Uh, The one I should have sang was, it goes like, uh, Mary, I love you very well. See you looking in the rain as a rain. I don't even know the words, but that's a great song. That's that's That would have been a funnier choice, I think, for the sake of the joke. Uh, anyway, some of these ideas come to me after the fact. Yeah, I'll record episodes, and then later that evening I'll go, Ah, I should have said this. Well, too late, too late. This is what happens when you just do it all at one shot, and you just improv it. Uh, hey, let's give a shout-out, which is what I tend to do in the outro. A shout-out to Joanna in painfully rural Tennessee who bought me a coffee. Yeah, that's what it says. Joanna in painfully rural Tennessee. You guys can imagine what painfully rural Tennessee must be like. So we want to give Joanna some love and make her feel good about herself. Let her know that she's cherished here on the Weird AF News Network. She wrote me a nice note with the coffee. It said, I've said it before, Jonesy. You are funny AF and you are wicked smart. I see your website's bookmark every time I pick up my phone, but I force myself to wait so I can listen while I do my chores. Jonesy, you are the antidote to my executive dysfunction. No jonesing for Ritalin when I got Jonesy. She says, I'll be back home, quote, home in L.A. in November and hope to catch a live show. That would be great. Yes, please. See me in November. I'll definitely have shows. I'll be leaving town for Thanksgiving because I'll be going back to Massachusetts to visit my family. But for the rest of the month, I will be home here in L.A. Uh, So anyways, another shout out to Joanna. That was very generous of her to buy me a coffee. That's a good way to support the show. Just go to weirdafnews.com, the official website. You can click on buy a coffee. It's right on the homepage. Also want to give some love to two people who uh, brought to my attention this podcast player called 
Pocket Casts. It's just another way to listen to podcasts. It's an app for your phone. Apparently, lately, you've been able to uh, add ratings to to podcasts on there. So a couple of people left me a good rating, and I just wanted to give them some love. You can't really write a full review, but you can you can leave a positive five stars if you'd like. And so Fred left me five stars. He wanted to let me know. So shout out to Fred. And who is the other person we have here? Lisa. Lisa also. Uh, Lisa Co. left me five stars as well on Pocket Cast. So ordinarily, I would read the lovely reviews that people write about the, uh, the podcast, but you can't write one on there. So it's in that way, it's similar to Spotify. So on Spotify, you can only give stars. And by the way, if you happen to be listening to Spotify, it only takes a, a th- three seconds to leave five stars on the podcast. So please consider doing that. It doesn't take much time at all. I don't want to put you through the ringer or anything like that in order to leave me a positive review. You could just click on five stars or four or, you know, I, I'm happy with three. You, you know, I really set the bar low. You know, I'm easy to please. So if you want to give me three, that's thumbs up on that. Uh, All right. uh, I guess that's about it. I do enjoy reviews. It's a way to help the show without uh, making a donation of any sort. I know the economy is no bueno. So if you want to help out, leave a review or just tell a friend about Weird AF News. I would really appreciate that as well. All right. Thank you very much. I won't keep you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.